Welcome, my friends, to Dreaming While Awake. In an interview series where Mooney Thinker interviews other fellow artists, today we are very fortunate to have Forrest Wells with us. He is a short story, novelist, and poet. Without further ado, though, I'd like to bring Forrest into the studio so we can kind of work and understand who Forrest is and kind of better understand him as the artist and the quality that he brings to his work. Hey, Forrest, how are you doing today? Howdy, I'm doing all right. How goes it for you? Not too bad, man. I'm doing pretty darn good. Um, so thank you for joining me for this interview series. I really appreciate you being here. Glad, ha happy to be here. Yeah. So if you're cool with it, let's just jump right into the artist questions. By all means. Cool, man. Cool. From your website, I've seen that you're a very prolific writer with a focus in novels, short stories, and poetry. I'm kind of curious. Why did you choose this medium? Uh, it kind of chose me. Um, even, even as a kid, I was always writing, you know, when we had journal time in school, I was always writing a story of some kind. Yeah. And then the muse woke up and it just, I needed to express. First That's it was awesome. poems, then a couple of stories, and then what I've got now. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, you've written quite a bit of work and it's pretty, it's good to see. So presently you have three books published. Uh, how has that process been for you? Actually, just two. Um, I have a couple of short stories and some collections, but I only have two books that are published myself. Ah, okay, cool. And well, in answering that, I forgot the question. What, what was the question again? You... Sure, yeah. And how was that process of publishing for you? Exhausting and quite rough because I kept getting rejection after rejection after rejection. I couldn't figure out why. I, they always wanted to see the full manuscript, and then they didn't want to see and then they decided to go against it. And I couldn't figure out why. Eventually, I finally got to a, a writer's conference where I got to talk to the editors. And they said, it's a too niche. It's a wolf book. It's too Disney, which I don't understand how that's a bad thing. But clearly, they got stuck on the wolves. So I went south from there. And I learned the hard way. <laughs> I very definitely learned the hard way at how to do things and the things I have to worry about. Well, that's kind of good, though. I mean, it shows a lot of self-perseverance. Like, you just kept at it, even with the rejections. You never gave up. And that's a really challenging thing that most people go through. So that's, that's pretty sweet. Good job, man. Well, thank you. Uh, it helped that, at the time, I had a 100% I loved it from beta readers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had an entire Girl Scout troop that not only wanted the book, they wanted a sequel. They got okay. a prequel. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean... Yeah, and that's really challenging and tough, but I really appreciate that you're able to kind of like switch gears and kind of like allow yourself to be like, mm, all right, this little roadblock, I'm still going to get through it. I still got to find a way to evolve around it. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty good, man. Well, my stories don't leave me alone. I've tried to put them down a couple of times and they don't, they didn't accept that for long. <laughs> they just keep flowing out. They have to get out kind of thing. Yeah, and they keep bugging me. like, hey, you know, we could do it this way. We could do, we could try this. It's just, like, okay, okay, shut up. We will. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Do you have any advice for those who are looking to venture out into the publication territory then that through this experience you'd be able to provide? I'm not sure because I still feel like I'm a bit of a novice myself. Um, if you go self, it's better to be ready on time than half, or it's better to be ready late than half baked off on time. Right. I learned that the hard way, especially with Luna, because I made so many mistakes because I was trying to reach a date that I had set for myself. Right. And I, you know, there are some errors in there that snuck in because I didn't wait long enough to be sure it was fully ready. Right. So if you go sell, have a proof in your hands that looks good, then start the pre-order pre countdown because now something is going to be off. There's something you're going to miss something you're not going to think about oh. and something that is going to take way longer than you think it will. Yeah. Well, that's really um, kind of also, cool. Rejection does not mean it's a story problem. I mean, yeah. Madeline L. Ingalls, Wrinkle in Time, 32 rejections. Harry Potter got rejected 12 times. It is not necessarily a story problem. Right. But it's hard to figure out when it's a story problem versus what I ran into where they couldn't see the benefit. And I, I don't mean to sound so arrogant about that. It's, you know, Oh, I'm so good. No. I have beta readers and reviewers tell me that it's not a story problem. And even since publication, 
I have had reviewers and feedback say it's not a story problem. So right. it's it's not high and mighty. It's based on what I'm seeing. The story was fine. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like I said, though, like it's a really good thing that you're able to adapt to it, though, and kind of still make it your own without allowing this roadblock to kind of stop you. And that's really good because there's been a lot of, you know, that's a very common thing that people say where, you know, I, I, I ran into a, a I, I crashed and it hurt and I wasn't able to kind of get back out of it. So it's like it shows that your self perseverance of this artistic quality is not just wanting to get out, but you as a person is able to say, you know what, we're going to keep going. That's pretty good. Well, I'm stubborn. <laughs> Even when I try not to be, my stories are. <laughs> That's awesome. So when you're, so you like to connect a lot with the canid uh, species. I'm kind of curious, what is it about this that gives you such a deep connection to it and you'd like to share with your audience on? <clears throat> wolves have always been a passion of mine and from, by extension, wolves, coyotes, and foxes. So I've always been fascinated by the animals in general. Wolves, it's the family structure. And as I've gotten to know them even more, it appeals to me even more because it's not this kingdom where you have the king on top and then you know, all the underlings. It's like these households that have five generations in the same house. Naturally, the eldest leads. That's what a pack real is. There's no such thing as an alpha. It's, hi, mom. Hi, dad. You're, hi, grandpa. It's, it's the mom and dad of the family and all the kids. Right. And that family bond really appeals to me. So on your website, you share that uh, you have a learning disability of dys dysgraphia. How has this challenge helped as well as hindered the progress of moving forward in the form of like authorship? I think it's helped because I don't, because I get to ignore a lot of the advice because, you know, they say you must write every day. Uh, no. <laughs> when I do that, I do worse, not better. Oh, and wow. I've, and this is by trial and error that I've discovered. Okay, I cannot. I actually do worse when I fight like that. So even if it means six months without writing a thing, when it cracks, it cracks wide open. Right. But okay. it does hinder because I have to be in the perfect mindset, and with the last year and a half, that has been extremely hard to get into. Right. It dysgraphia makes it really hard for me to get my thoughts out of my head down. Typing helps, but it's still a problem. Right. So if I'm uptight or stressed or I don't have a nice, calm work environment to write in, it can be extremely difficult. And when I have a scene that's complicated and hard to pin down, right. ju that just makes it all the more all the harder well, it makes a lot of sense but it's again it's like it's like what i've noticed with your work is you have a strong perseverance which is really great because you've been able to kind of like see this challenge which many others might say this is what's hindering me but instead you've taken this challenge and applied yourself into one of the hardest art forms then for this challenge and that's really incredible <laughs> yeah it's i often say i'm a writer with dysgraphia explain this i can't <laughs> so You've done a collaboration with other writers, right? With working in the short stories uh, for Kyanite Press. And so I was kind of curious, how has that experience been for you? And do you look forward to working in other collaborative projects? Um, I would love to do more short stories or poems that I can get into collections. Um, I didn't work directly with the authors. It was just, I submitted my work for the collections. Okay. So for Wolf Warriors and for the Kyanite Press, which... Unfortunately, the Kainai press production is no longer in production. Okay. But I didn't work with the authors. Okay. That said, I'd certainly be up for that. And if an idea for a short story hits again, I would love to collaborate again with another project like that. Yeah. And within writing, since you've done novels, short stories, and poetry, is there one of the three or maybe even two or three or even all three that really connects with you the closest? It's all it all depends on what the topic is. Mm -hmm. For poetry, it's about whatever it is I'm expre expressing. What, you know, an, emo an emotion, a thought, a feeling, a place that I am. Poetry is all about expressing something for me. That's why I don't do a rhyme and meter anymore. It's just let it out. Yeah, so you're doing free verse. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, my stories are a story. I'm following a journey. And you know, in the short stories that I have in Kainai Press, it's not that long a journey. I just, it's only two or 3,000 words that I 
followed that journey in. With the novels, it's a much longer and much more complex journey from where they began to where they ended up. You know, right. Luna began was born as a pup. He everyone expected him to be be an alpha when he grew up, and then his life got turned upside down. And now we follow his journey from pup to what? You know, what does he become at the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite challenging. I've I've always appreciated like um, all the venues as well, and just like all unique ways of how they actually work and express themselves. Through your writing, what do you hope to communicate with your audience? A lot of time, times there's nothing specific or the story has its own ideas. Um, for years, Luna, Luna the Lone Wolf, it was all about just what it says on the back. Even a lone wolf can do good things. Right. And as one of the character me well, conversations mentions, don't you mean great things? Anyone can do great things. Take someone special to do good things. <clears throat> Each story, I think, has its underlying aspect, but I'm not sure what it is yet. You know, Blood of an Alpha, I think the core of it is kind of staying true to yourself and true to the others, even no matter what. Right. With my upcoming sci-fi, I don't know yet. There's something there, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. So do you want to talk about your sci-fi a little bit? Um, sure. It's still in progress. I'm still waiting for my copy editor to get back to me. The working title right now is Fog of War, and it's plan to be book one in a series oh, and it's cool. following this three-man fighter fighter crew of the interstar fighter gold one you have Jay jason Har harlem and two alien foxes i call holdrens sundale and yarain and they're grizzled veterans they've been through war for the last 10 years and book one that war looks like it's finally ending but then there's this other threat lurking in the shadows and behind the scenes of both governments and it may not even be new at all. Oh. And it's threatening to kick off a whole new war that may be the one that finally breaks their back. I mean, they've been at war for so long. How much more How much more war can Gold One take? Right. I look forward to seeing it later. I'm sorry. I hope the climate is still good enough for it to come out. I mean, with thing, recent events, I'm a little worried about that. But we'll, we'll see where things stand when I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, beyond writing, though, are there other forms of artistic expression that you are looking into or are looking to experiment with? Not extensively. Um, my I did my own book trailers for the most part. I mean, I found bits and pieces in the music, but I compiled them on my own. Oh, cool. So a little bit of video and audio editing is kind of fun. I've dabbled in digital imaging, but it's basic stuff like using a file that I commissioned an art artist to do. She gave me the line art. And then I can use that line art to plot out the fur colors of my foxes. Right. So it's some of that, but really mostly writing is the only one that really maintains my interest enough to keep at it. That's cool. And do you have any new or upcoming works that you'd like to kind of share with the audience? Uh, unfortunately, it's you know, just fog of war that I'm hoping for early next year. You know, if I, in a perfect world, I'd love to launch it on sci-fi day in February but I'm still waiting for the copy editor. Then I got to get it formatted, the cover art. Yeah, there's a lot of steps. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. Right. Um, yeah. back, in, back in October, I released Blood of an Alpha, which is the prequel collection to my first novel. Uh, not much else, unfortunately, at the moment. That's cool. Well, that's still a lot of work on your plate, though. That's quite a bit. Yeah, and I'm still working on, you know, if I can get the muse to wake up, I've got book two to work on. Well, actually, I was really curious that you're actually talking about the muses. I'd like to move now into our philosophical questions of being an artist. You ready to go for that? By all means. Cool, man. So what does art mean to you? I guess art is just an expression that touches someone in a certain way. You have viol you know, this moving violin or trumpet solo that really makes you feel something. You have song that touches your heart. Art. You have a movie or TV show that makes you feel something and then of course artwork that appeals to you and writing that ma makes a fictional world feel real when all it is is just text mm -hmm. so kind of art is just creating something that in some way touches someone and yeah. it's often an expression of whatever the artist is feeling or thinking or just what's on their mind no, i agree man it's got a lot of depth to it doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, we could probably spend a month on it and not even get it all. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very various and fluid dis, dis, uh, like definition. You know? And some people would debate what is art. You know, There are 
visual artists out there who say that digital art is art is not art. It's like, uh, okay, I don't understand that. Yeah, I've heard that a few times. Like people have been like, well, it's hard for me to see that what I do is art. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? They're like, you know, like especially because from a lot of writers. And I'm like, I I understand what you're saying, but let's try to look at it differently. And I kind of try to work with them to kind of let them know like, all right, well, let's look at this from a different perspective and see how this could be art. Kind of curious, you've mentioned quite a bit of the muses and that's actually one of the questions I actually usually typically ask. And I really enjoy that you brought this up. So do you feel we have muses and how do they speak to you? Most artists have a muse of some kind. It's that voice inside that the ideas come from. Now, whether they are triggered or they just pop out of nowhere, that varies on the artist. But usually the muse is that thing within them that makes the art come forth. Right. Um, for me, it's it's almost like curiosity. It, you, for example, I don't want to go into too detail without spoiling it all, but one idea that I have in my back burner to write someday, you remember the Shrek movie? Yeah. You know, and the first one, you know, you had the dragon and then Donkey's like, you're a girl dragon. Of course you're a girl dragon. And the muse and I was like, suddenly all the furry tales make sense. Now I understand why there has been a dragon guarding a princess in a castle. Mm. And from that curiosity of examining, okay, why you know, the why? Why is that dragon even there? Right. And the more I thought about it, the more it kind of made sense. And from that curiosity came a story about a dragon that I am really excited to get to someday, tentatively titled Zaire's Peak. Since we've talked about like how you, you, have, you have a lot going on, you have a lot working through, how do you keep yourself disciplined to actually make sure you're actually following through with all these projects and getting them to fruition? Well, for me is I fight writer's block by denying it battle. Um, when I sit down and I'm trying to, and it's just not coming... I step away. Yeah. Again, I do better when I don't force it. And it's like, it kind of crumbles on its own when I'm not, it's kind of like cornstarch. You know, you keep yeah. pounding on it. It doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> you stop pounding on it long enough. It starts to dissipate. Right. Um, but I've also learned to nudge it a little, you know, to give the muse just a little nudge. And sometimes that's enough to get the ball rolling. Uh, it's just keep chipping at it. Um, try to keep doing one thing after the other. I have a cut. I can't do anything with the sci-fi right now, really, because I'm waiting for the copy editor. Right. Um, I have the basic cover art. I can't do much with the full cover image because I need how thick is my book? Well, the copy editor may change that mm. because you need to worry about the spine length. Again, little. I keep poking the muse, poking the story about the next book, and I've formed kind of a DMV like style writing cue with my works. You know, I talk about the dragon story. Well. She's unfortunately behind the sci-fi and a werewolf fantasy that are ahead of it in line. Right. But it's always there because, and the stories just kind of tend to figure themselves out. They can, they tend to tell me who's next. Oh, I know that's not the same for every author, but for me, it's been the case of one or two stories will demand my attention. And those are the ones that I do the research on and focus on and chip at when I can. Well, that makes a lot of sense, actually, because it makes it, it, it sounds like you got like a really good priority system instead of it's like you said, you don't fight it. You just you're going to go with the flow. You're not going to go against the river. So it's actually a really good way of looking at it. Well, I'm a pantser, so going with the flow is pretty much how I operate. Well, that's that's pretty good. It's a very big challenge for most people. They just allow it to stress themselves out. So it's really refreshing to hear that someone's just kind of just kind of smooth it out, man. <laughs> So what kind of uh, is a major roadblock you tend to face and how do you kind of work with it? Um, well, again, with dysgraphia, outside side pressures, you know, with all, between the lockdowns and the pandemics and now, now that, you know, and then, of course, of course, the social turmoil, it really got to me. So it's hard to get into that writing mindset to tackle things. And I have a particular scene in book two that's given me fits because I'm having to do mental gymnastics with why is that character in a place that technically he shouldn't be? Yeah. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's quite literally, why is the vice president on the front lines? Right. Because he needs to be there. Um, story, that's not quite enough. I need a little more. Why is he there? Because he needs to be there. <sighs> yeah. 
Unfortunately, the story is usually right. And I, even though some people are going to harp on me for it, oh, it's not realistic. No, it's not. And it drives me crazy too. But the story said it had to be, so it is. I mean, the wolves and Luna are not entirely realistic, but they are how they needed to be for the story to be what it is. Right. So if you're looking for hyper-realism with me, you're not going to get the expanse from my sci-fi. It's going to be more Babylon 5 meets Star Trek. Well, that actually works out. I mean, we all have to have our own unique styles and our own unique creations, too. And it's like, realistically, sometimes when we're watching a show or we're reading a book, we're kind of going along for the journey anyway. And it's best to just kind of sit in, buckle in, ride the coaster and enjoy the ride. So as long as it's consistent, which I do aim for, you know. If I got, if you can't just jump from Earth, Earth to Mars in five seconds in book one, you can't do it in book ten either. You know, right. the rule will stay consistent. No, that makes a lot of sense. So, related to this art form, what kind of advice would you give the younger you? It's hard because a lot of what I, you know, a lot of the skills I have now I learned because I went through the process and the trials. Yeah. So okay. a younger me, it's just. I guess stay the course um, yeah. and trust the story. Um, that's the big thing is trust the story. The story knows better than you do, unfortunately. So trust that the story has the answers for the questions that pop up. That's pretty cool, though, because you did learn a lot and you were able to apply it. So that's really good. You're kind of adding some more stuff into your little toolbox of life. Who's an artist or artist that have inspired you? Um, Jane Linskold is an author who is a true weaver of plot lines. She'll have five, you know, a dozen different plot lines all interconnected but separated, and then she'll crash them together in time for the climax perfectly. She's very much a refined, high-end writing, uh -huh. writing style. Um, I like to say when she she you know, her books are read by trained scribes for kings and nobles. Me we're sitting in a Carl's Jr. and I'm talking about this wolf I met, which is not to say either one is better or worse. It's just a difference of style. Right. It's like we all have different voices. So we have to use what we, we have and then naturally use what we give. And then David Weber, I really admire how his sci-fi feels really well built. I mean, when somebody cries missile launch on the br bridge of the fearless, I feel like I know everything that call just triggered. Um, and then of course, some visual artists, People like Golden Wolf, e e Sky Works, and some of the some of the others create these really vibrant characters that really help me visualize mine. I think we've been able to kind of cover a lot of the amazing work that you've done as an artist, as well as understanding you philosophically. As we kind of come to a close of this interview, I was kind of curious. You've currently shared that there's been a there's a lot of upcoming work coming. Is there anything you'd like to talk to the audience of what to expect with some of your future works and how they can best connect with you as an artist as well as a writer? Well, the best way to connect is on Twitter and Facebook. Um, you know, tweet at, at me when you see me a po see a post, comment. I love interacting with people so, or send me an email. I, you know, my, it's all listed on my website. I love interacting with people. I love hearing the feedback and I love you know the back and forth. With the future, my bread and butter is emotion. I'm going to make you feel something. With Luna, it, with Luna the Lone Wolf, it was his journey as he goes through the pain of going from future alpha to complete loner right. blood of an alpha there are three or four things that go on there with fog of war as far as i can tell anyway a lot of it is going to be the fo the emotions of the soldiers who chart headlong into the horrors of war knowing full well what they're going to expect and how it affects them right i will say though that fog of war is not luna luna was aimed at the young adults fog of war this thing is very much a general audience. I'm going to hit you pretty hard in a couple of places. That's good. Well, and I really appreciate you actually reaching out to me too, so we can actually do this interview. So thank you for doing that. Oh, my pleasure. It's, you know, I found a lot of a lot of things by just stumbling. So I'm glad I stumbled onto you. And I really appreciate just you pinging me and checking me out and seeing if you were, if I was available to do this. So thanks, man. I really appreciate the quality of work that you do, the trials that you've gone through and just the perseverance you take on to all your work to just keep going forward and doing amazing work. Well, I'm glad you were kind enough to ha have me. I'm still new, so any exposure helps. <laughs> and maybe we can help each other here. Sure, and there'll be future opportunities for us to do more interviews later in the future, man. Um, poke me. <clears throat> I'm very po pokeable. Don't, 
I'm happy to help if I can. And, you know, if we can help each other, all the better. 